This class is concerned with the features of a business research report. This is one of many classes on this topic. Uh, the classes are short, to the point, and generally speaking, very straightforward to follow. In this particular class, we're going to look at data collection. So in this section of the business research report, we're going to look at data collection. Now, the use of primary data distinguishes the research from other work in the area. Other work may use, um, for example, secondary data. And many pieces of work, many pieces of research may be based, based on the same secondary data. Perhaps the data has been analysed differently or different sections of the data have been selected. But given it's all based on the same source, generally speaking, the pieces of research will be similar or will overlap in some way. But the use of primary data distinguishes research from other work in the area. Primary research means collecting the data first hand, which means that the research is distinguished from other area other work in that area. Now research uniqueness may also be achieved through the use of new or sophisticated techniques of analysis, perhaps very sophisticated st statistical techniques. Uh, so the data may be subject to some new tabulation, some new way of analysis in statistics, which may involve significant computer power to generate the results. But that would give the, the work a uniqueness. That would give the research, if you like, a newness, a uniqueness. Uh, it would differentiate the research from other pieces of work in the area. Management decision-making is facilitated by good primary research. Management decision-making, uh, if it's based on secondary research, on published data, then the competitors can get access to that data as well. So the competitors' decision-making will be similar. There, there's no advantage to management in using secondary data. The advantage to management in making decisions is good primary research, which is unique. It's, it's a particular insight, if it's done properly, into the behavior of competitors or the behavior of customers or suppliers or whatever. If it's good primary research, it facilitates good decision making. And that's what is, if you like, unique. And management can use it as their own. If it's based on secondary, everyone can get access to it. There is no uniqueness. So the decision making will not have an advantage. The limitations of the analysis should be openly discussed. Uh, this indicates both honesty and professionalism. And the limitations do not detract from the research. It's important that limitations of research are clearly stated so that anyone reading the report know that there are potential problems. There may be errors or there may be issues in the wholesale adoption of the recommendations. The recommendations are based on the research perhaps and the research may have assumptions which are not very realistic or the research was conducted in a way which uh, meant the data was not, if you like, 100% reliable. There were issues. Perhaps because of resources or because of time constraints, there, there were issues in uh, conducting the research. But whatever it is, the limitations should be stated. And since they're stated, that has been honest. And it's also showing professionalism. It's showing that uh, there's no attempt at deceit or cheating. They are showing openly what the limitations are. Now these are some of the issues involved in 
data um, collection. This, this topic is considered in much more detail in other videos in these classes and you will have bumped into it many times over in different situations. But this short class just summarizes and brings out some of the key features of uh, data collection and the issues involved in data collection. And that's all I'm going to do in this session. Very short, very straightforward. So we'll leave it at that and say thank you for watching.